technology and humanity are converging, you could say. Okay. Things that used to be science fiction are science fact. I can ask questions to the machine. I can speak to the machine. The machine can answer me in the voice of, of Scarlett Johansson. I can dub my videos. I can learn everything on ChatGPT and on and on and on it goes. Now, AI is a sort of a general purpose technology that is going to be part of everything. And here's the question. How do we make it 95% good and 5% bad, which is inevitable with any technology? Technology is more or neutral until we use it. We have to think about how we use it well. It's the, probably the most powerful tool we have ever invented. A lot of people today are looking at the future and saying that, what are you talking about? The good future, there's, there's no such thing. But my own kids, 30 and 35, say the future is bad. 70% of European millennials around 30 say they will not have children because the future sucks. And you can't blame them because when you're looking at this curve today, and we have all that stuff happening that brings us to the top of what I call perma change. Millennials, dramatic geopolitical changes, technology disruption, economic paradigms, and it's only the beginning. Not to mention, of course, Trump 2.0. But we're safe to say that business as usual is dead and therefore education as usual is dead or dying. We keep educating people like it was 30 years ago, the industrial revolution, the knowledge revolution, the internet revolution. We're going beyond knowledge now because guess what? Machines can have knowledge. Machines don't have knowledge like us. It's binary, it's numbers, zeros and ones, but still, I'll explain what I mean before I give you this long list of complaints that people have today about today, about climate emergency, AI, or misinformation, geopolitical tensions, nuclear weapons, and the list goes on to the bottom of the page. If you watch the news, you can clearly get depressed today. But I still believe that the future is better than we think, that there's many things that we're doing right. And also I take hope from the fact that I believe that humans are in principle not evil. Many people look at this and are saying, oh, this is just another proof that humans are useless. We can't collaborate. We can't get anything done. I really think the underlying real key issue is this. We have an old paradigm, profit and growth. My paradigm, my generation. If you're 30, your paradigm isn't quite the same. I call this people, planet, purpose, and prosperity, the four Ps. That's the theme of my work. And we're in the middle of switching. We are now shifting to a new generation that want different things. We're shifting away from the outdated economic logic that will kill us. Clearly, if we pursue this path, our path is short because we're not collaborating. Right? We're keeping separate. We're going to look for a future fit economy, of course, artificial intelligence. If all we do is make more money with AI, we've got 20 years. If that's all we want. We're going to replace humans with machines in 90% of all jobs and activities building a general intelligence like Microsoft, OpenAI, Baidu, Alibaba is trying to build to replace humans with machines. I am all for machines and technology to replace our donkey work, the commodity work, to help us have better tools. I'm against building machines that seek to replace us, that seek to become conscious, have human agency. Think about this for a second. We're going to build a machine that is more intelligent than all of humanity combined. It doesn't strike me as a really hot idea. <laughs> We're going to become the second most intelligent species. You know what happens to them, right? They get stepped on. We can be happy to be the pets of the AI. We need to move AI over to this, to a different paradigm. This is why OpenAI, for example, cannot be the company that decides the fate of humanity. I stopped my subscription to OpenAI ChatGPT two weeks ago, not because I don't like the product, I love the product. I do not want to give money to those guys that seek to essentially replace humans, to build digital humans. That's the mission. That's the official mission, not like Facebook's mission to dominate the world with their misinformation. No, it's actually the pronounced mission. And that has great impact, of course, when we talk about the good future, the future fit education. What does that look like when machines have knowledge? Here's the paradigm of the past the paradigm of work. When we study, we have data, information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. The permit of the future moves up to where we focus on deeper knowledge, tacit information, 
the things that only humans can do. If we meet later, only for 0.4 seconds, we can judge each other and get a feeling about each other without saying a single word. Humans don't think with the brain, we think with the body, with everything. Machines can't do that, they don't have a body. But eventually, of course, somebody will think of giving them a body so they can be even more fake and simulated. Purpose fit education. Now listen to this guy, Mustafa Suleiman. He is the head of AI for Microsoft. Okay, see what he has to say about knowledge. The economics of information are about to radically change because we're going to reduce the cost of production of knowledge to zero marginal cost. And this is just a, a very difficult thing for people to intuit. But in 15 or 20 years time, we will be producing new scientific cultural knowledge at almost zero marginal cost. That's interesting. Of course, he would say that he's selling software to produce knowledge at zero marginal cost. Right, think about that for a second. In the industrial society, we increased our muscles through technology. In the digital society, we increase our brain, we augment our brain. We can simulate our brain and we can have AI become our brain. In many ways, you can say that just one step forward from this becoming our brain. Everything is in here and we rely on it like a second brain. This is clearly a moment where we have to ask a question, what about the heart? All that matters is the brain. This is not what human life is all about. The brain, intelligence, the more intelligent, the better. Too much intelligence will kill us. We got to think about what that means. Intelligence only, that's not enough. IQ only, that's not enough. When we think about this world, we have open AI building artificial general intelligence. General intelligence means a machine that can do all of human tasks better than humans. All of them, not just one, like writing an email or something. OpenAI, Sam Altman says, the coming change will center around the AI to do the phenomenal ability to think, create, understand, and reason. Where I would say, okay, thinking machines, search engines, writers, summarizers, that's all pretty cool. And I like that. But a machine that understands and reason brings up an interesting quote from Blade Runner, 1982. Commerce is our goal here in Tyrell. More human than human is our motto. You may have seen the movie 1982, Blade Runner. More human than human is our motto. What more ridiculous definition of your company can you think of? When we talk about learning, more human than human, what does that mean? It's like being exponentially human, basically creating a genie that can do all these things. Look at this graph, it's showing you already here on the left, it's showing you what we can already do with machines. Summarizing, translating, handwriting, grade school math, passing the bar exam, code generation. See that curve on the left? It all goes to 100%. What's going to happen in 10 years? It'll be 1,000%. <laughs> and what do we do then? It's worth understanding what will happen in the next five years. The work that these guys highlighted are going to generate savants, that is, specialized assistants that will work with you in whatever you do an artist savant, a music savant, a physics savant, and so forth. Thank you, Eric. That's Eric Schmidt, former CEO of Google. We're going to generate savants. We're going to generate a teacher savant. Is that the mission? Is that possible? If we think of a teacher as just a brain, a purveyor of information, then it's possible. But of course, you all know that's not the case. So this is called technology optimism. It's the idea of saying everything is a technology problem. There are no other problems than technology, and if there are problems, we can solve them with more technology. Of course, we know that the real problems in the world aren't about technology. They're about our collaboration. Culture, politics, religion, those are the real issue. Generating savants, interesting idea, he said, we might be scraping the upper limits of what humans can do. That's probably true. We can't memorize Wikipedia, we can't be as far as in translating. And more interesting, AI, by contrast, is the ultimate polymath. Read this article here in the Atlantic magazine. Eric says, AI, by contrast, is the ultimate polymath, a scientist that can do any science. Polymath. Transcend the limitations of intellectual discovery. The machine is going to bring intellectual discovery. We're going to go from a future of where we are in the Vitruvian man-woman, where we have science around us, to a future where this is the next inventor. Now we have to ask the question, some of that would be good. All of that 
will be very bad. How do we go forward? What do we teach people? When we teach people to be like a machine, they end up machines, not surprising. If you work like a robot, a robot will take your job. If you learn like a robot, you'll never have a job. We have to learn not to be a robot. That sounds familiar, but it's really not that new. But even today, that's of course a big mission. Because Eric says we're going to have the homo technicus, the, the human that's amplified by AI. To which I would say, that's great that we have all these amazing tools, but how do we remain human when we are homo technicus? Here in Germany, of course, that question is ridiculous because in Germany, you know, we're humanists. And in Europe, we're humanists. But what about America? We have some humanists there. I think we have to look for them now, but they're still there. Right? Artificial intelligence is now progressing towards the general intelligence. And clearly, we need to draw a line here and say, okay, how much too much is killing us? We cannot win the war for artificial general intelligence because a war on AI, like a war with nuclear weapons, kills everyone. We clearly don't want a machine that's going to be as intelligent as all of humanity, which is possible by 2030. 2030, the so-called singularity. Now I'm going to give you some good news as well. AI is a powerful tool, a magical tool. A person with AI will be the person without AI. Simple as that. A person with a good tool generally beats the person with a bad tool. But the tool isn't the person. The tool isn't a religion, like technology has become a religion. The most popular religion in the world is not any of the ones Using that we know. Using AI for probably the biggest positive transformation that education has ever seen. And the way we're going to do that is by giving every student on the planet an artificially intelligent but amazing personal tutor. And we're going to give every teacher on the planet a, an amazing... Okay, Sal from Khan Academy. We're going to give every person an AI instructor and an AI tutor. Right. Is that really going to solve the problem? Or are we going to end up in the world like this, where AI tells us what to believe? What about our own thinking? If it was just information and data, yes, clearly we could use that tool. But it's not. We should not put the machine at the core of learning. Or we're going to end up in a place like this. A place where we have what the AI thinks of a teacher. Right? Yet we have to clearly face this fact. We're moving education to a post-knowledge economy. Post-knowledge in the sense of simple knowledge. Not all knowledge, <laughs> but facts. If we can ask the machine about any facts, why would we memorize all of it? And we are in a fact-based knowledge economy in universities, colleges, human resources, what have you. Right? It's not about facts, it's about the unfact that a machine cannot beat us. Machines will do the routine work, all of it, sooner or later, like all of it. From driving car to flying the airplane, to calculating financial return, to doing financial advice, to doing your social media posts, and so on and so on. That's what machines are capable of. We're looking at a world where these things, the components of learning, the AI is already quite good at this, contributing all the way to insight, and in the future, it will grow exponentially to contribute to all of them. What it can't do is wisdom or foresight or compassion. It can fake compassion, of course. That is possible, right? But it can never be compassionate. So here's my colleague, Gert with the bot, with an advice. I think education currently is still just providing knowledge. And really what's happening is that knowledge is becoming something that computers can have. And we have to go above the knowledge, which is tacit knowledge, quiet knowledge, understanding, intuition, imagination, uh, consciousness, spirituality, all these things that are a little bit difficult to describe. All right, thank you, Gerd, but that was generated with a tool called Runway. In this world, the explicit knowledge will be handled by machines because it's explicit, it's obvious. Our knowledge work will be this the implicit, the tacit knowledge, as it always has been, but even more so now, as AI is coming to life, change the way that we look at things forever. This is what we do, right? We sense, we feel, we smell, we intuit, we have imagination, all of that stuff. We do not want the AI to copy that stuff, even if it was possible, which probably it will be eventually. We do not want the AI to do that. And why would we build this? 
machine intelligence is not the same as human intelligence, and we should keep it that way. Human intelligence involves dozens of things. This is why we do learning in person, not just on the screen. Arthur C. Clarke, science fiction writer, says, let me remind you that information is not knowledge and knowledge is not wisdom. Information is not knowledge and knowledge is not wisdom. That's why we study, so we can attain wisdom, right? Some sort of realization, not some BS copied content that spreads all over Twitter, whoever they are now. So in this world, we have to remind ourselves, machines don't think, machines don't have hunches they don't understand or imagine. They certainly don't care. And even if they could, I don't want them to care. I don't care about what the machine finds likely to cause me happiness. Then we're going to live in the movie Her, which I'm sure you've seen, where we are really connected, but dying from loneliness. So technology alone is not enough. Intelligence alone is dangerous. Learning is not about data and information, but realization. And this is what we have to pursue. If you invent technical tools, they should help us to get there, not replace us to get there. Right? That mission is unattainable and also a very bad idea. In this world, we have to keep reminding ourselves everything that is worth paying attention to, movies, books, keynote speakers, futurists, is the result of an effort. You make an effort, that's how you get somewhere. If you're a good cook, you make an effort. You cook the same dish 557 times until you figure it out. That's called effort. And AI doesn't have any effort because it doesn't know meaning. And the choices you make, uh, an AI can make music, but it cannot make great music. An AI can write a book, but it cannot write a great book because it requires effort. Teaching, learning, understanding requires effort. It doesn't drop down to the helicopter program in Minority Report. It doesn't do that. So let me summarize. The robots are coming to take our routines. Routines. A world without us doing all the routines is fine. Most routines we don't like. So that's, in some cases, between 30 and 70, 90% of our jobs. If you work in a call center, it's 95% of your job. It's routine. That's not a good job to pursue, clearly. But in this future, we have to set new priorities. Learning and education that's fit for the future focuses on human-only traits and skills. Human-only. Intuition, imagination, negotiation, em empathy, compassion, consciousness. That's what education needs to focus on. And on top of that, of course, it needs to focus on understanding technology because it's going to be everywhere. Make no mistake about this. Very few people can get by and never look at technology. So if you know how to program, always good. I don't, but it's always a good thing, but it's not mutually exclusive. Last point, always keep the humans in the loop. Hittle. No matter what you do, that's the key to success, not to become a commodity. You become a commodity as a human, as a teacher, or as a student, you're worthless. You are indeed a useless human. We don't want that, we want to stay useful. All right, so let's keep these rules intact. I'm going to wrap up by saying that the good future, as I call it, brings up choices for us. The choices we make define our future. If you have kids or you're going to have kids, you've got to think about that. Right? What kind of future do you want your kids to have? Old Cherokee Indian saying, the wolf you feed is the wolf that wins. And that is about the future of education. Thank you very much.